Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It is New Year's Day, and Friday the 1st, and we are free at last. <laughs> the floodwaters have receded. So uh, I went looking to see the damage down the road, and I didn't see my sign, which kind of directs people back to my shop. And I found my sign, fortunately. You can see it's kind of a muddy mess and the bottom's missing off of it. <laughs> but uh, it kind of floated away in the current, I guess. Fortunately, I found it. It was amazing how it, it didn't really go that far. It's a metal sign, so I guess it, it sunk pretty fast with this wood probably didn't hold it up. So uh, anyway, I'll have to clean that up and, and put that back out. And even though it's a holiday, I have decided to get started on the Gibson Dove Project. You know, when it's a holiday and you're working for the man, you want to take advantage of the holiday. But when you're working for yourself, you know, any day can be a holiday if you really want it to be. So it's not as important as it used to be to me to take those holidays. But anyway, as a reminder, this is how bad it is. It's in really bad shape. And you would not believe the problems I had trying to find a block of ebony about the right size. Now granted, I could find some much, much bigger, but they were three or four hundred dollars or two or three hundred dollars at least. So who wants to spend that just to repair a bridge, you know? So I uh, kept shopping around and at a hardware store in the St. Louis area, they shipped it to me. I found this piece of African blackwood. Now it's not ebony exactly, but it's so close that it's, well, as a matter of fact, it looks almost identical to what's on there. So nobody's going to know. And it's really dense, really hard. It's just like ebony. I, Property-wise, you really couldn't tell the difference. But on the phone, I told the guy, I said, now, I tell you, you know, it's hard to measure this because it's an odd shape. I said, but it needs to be every bit of two and a quarter for sure. And I said, it would be a lot better if it was bigger. He says, well, this one's two and three eighths. And I said, really? I, he, so he shipped it to me. And on this end here, it is just barely two and a quarter. On this end here, it's just barely, it's not even two and three eighths, it's two and five sixteenths. So it'll work, but it will just barely work. There is no room for error, <laughs> but I'll, I don't think we'll have any errors anyway, but man, I'll have to be very careful with this and make sure that we do it just right. But of course, the first problem is we have to get this off. I might just add too that this was uh, a problem getting this because of the flooding too. So uh, fortunately, I contacted the post office and they left it at a neighbor's house and I rode down the railroad tracks yesterday to get it. So anyway, we got it. So. But fortunately, the road is clear today, so I'm real happy. Now we'll get started on this. The very first thing we're going to do is we'll take out the saddle, which just pops out of there. I believe that's micarta or plastic or something. It looks like micarta. Uh, it might be bone. I ha I'd have to look at it under my microscope to tell. It's hard to say, but I think it's micarta based on my experience. Um, then i got to get this little, uh, it's got a pickup in it, electric pickup in it so we'll lift that out and see if we can get it out and see if it's not pinched in there I'm afraid I'm gonna break the thing it's pinched that this whole thing is lifted up and twisted forward this front end of it and the hole goes down through here for the for the pin for this uh, pickup it does not seem like it wants to be loose ah from the inside I can push it up that's good good I couldn't pull it out, but I could push it up from the inside. That worked. Whatever works. Well, we're going to have to get this completely disconnected in order to fix this. So I'm going to go inside and see what I got to do to disconnect the this. inside of the wiring with the mirror. And the best I can tell, it looks like this is one solid wire straight into the tail pin. There's some other battery wires and things that come around up here in the front but they also go straight into the tail pin. So it looks like we're gonna have to take the tail pin off to uh, disconnect this wire to pull it out because it's not gonna go through this direction. I do put sure. pickups in instruments, but I don't put this particular style in. I don't put this style in with the, uh, I think this is called the thin line, the Martin thin line or something like that. That's what it looks like. But uh, 
So I'm not all, you know, and I also don't commit this kind of stuff to memory either. I mean, I figure it out as I go every time. It's at my age, I can't remember anything anyway, so there's no point in trying to commit it. Okay, we've got ourselves a wrench here that seems to fit it, and it is pretty tight. So I'll try to hold it on the inside with my little with my fingers. Just barely can reach it. There we go. Got her loosened up. And there's the parts. And we can bring her out through the sound hole. Now we'll have to unscrew uh, the back cover off of this and see how that's connected. And of course it is soldered in. And it is a direct wire, as you can see here, so it's going to be a, an unsolder job to, uh, to do this well. There is no way I'm going to be able to poke that down through that hole, so there, that's not happening. So we're going to have to You know, since the invention of smartphones, one of the best features on them, of course, is the camera. And anytime I'm getting anything slightly complicated anymore, I find it just wise to take time and take, take a picture. Close-up picture right here. We'll show that. So we'll take that picture. That way, if when I do put it back together, it might be a couple weeks from now, I won't have to try to remember how that went. Okay, I have a soldering gun here got my close-up glasses and I'll operate the soldering gun with my left hand I've got this little probe here to kind of break it loose with my right hand and it almost worked there it is I got it loose And now we'll have to solder the unsolder the other connection. And it's loose. okay. I took the uh, solder gun and cleaned up the ends of those a little bit. Got rid of the extra solder there, and now it should just pull right on out. And it did. And now we'll have to figure out, I, 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 they've just got these other wires stuck up inside there, so we'll just have to unstick them and, and get them out. Got that out. I realized I didn't really have to take that out because it's not in the way in one way, but in the other way it rattles around inside there and as you turn the guitar around this is all flopping loose. So I just didn't want to deal with that. And so another little uh, side note is how I deal with all this stuff. All the loose parts go in a plastic bag like this and then I just put the plastic bag in the guitar case that belongs to this guitar because I won't be putting the guitar in the case for a while. It'll either be on the bench here or hanging on my rack and uh, so that way I'm assured that all the parts stay with the instrument. Okay, we're down to the fun and games now. And ordinarily I'd know exactly how to tackle this. It would not be an issue. But we got two variables in this particular bridge that are different than any other ones that, that you would normally do. One is, this is lifted up and it's completely loose under here. I, I think you can see that, but I mean I can literally put stuff underneath here. You can see how that'll just slide right up underneath the bridge but it's really stuck from here on down that's one variable the other problem is that I've got to save these inlays and this is torquing on this inlay already so if I just tried to peel that on up I'd probably break this inlay and I really got to be careful about that I don't want to break the inlay so the problem is with those two variables the inlay and this thing angled up is how do I heat it to get this loose well, I've been masking it off here with the cardboard, heating it up, trying all kinds of different things. 
Uh, it's not easy at all. It just doesn't want to cooperate even a little bit. So, I'm heating the part that's still stuck to the guitar in hopes, and I have made a little bit of progress, in hopes that I can just go ahead and kind of get it loose, then maybe the whole thing will just come loose together. Um, every one of these is a little different, you know, and you just have to go based on your experience and of what uh, the safest approach is. Boy, if I could just get that piece off, if that, if this dovetail, if this uh, dove inlay wasn't in this piece, I could work on this piece right here and break that piece off and get it out of my way, and then I could work from the inside in here and uh, wouldn't damage this finish. But, uh, darn, just nothing cooperating on this. This is one of the harder ways I've done that seems to be working a little bit. It's not the best, but it seems to be working. And that is that I'm heating, I, you can't see it on camera here, I can move this over a little bit. I'm heating the uh, tool on the iron I'm coming under the piece that's lifted up and I'm working on the this end of the bridge to loosen it up, which I've gotten it under there pretty far now. Less likely to make any marks on the top. I'm going to go to the wire wheel, clean off the glue off of this because that makes it a lot slicker. <coughs> the wire wheel there. cleaned off the glue real nice. Makes that blade much slicker for sliding. Ah. It's, not, it's not, not easy. Making slow progress, but we're making progress. There it is. There it is. Well, actually, it's clean and not clean. It doesn't look all that great on camera, I'm sure, but it, it doesn't look that bad when I'm looking down here, and I think we're going to be just fine. It, you can see how the grain separated and stuck to it in different places. Hey, I'm telling you what, for as tough as that one was, I'm happy with the, with the results we got here because it could have been a lot worse. It's Monday morning, January the 4th, and uh, Happy New Year to everybody. We, we uh, in the previous segment, we did get the uh, bridge off. You know, okay clean, not great, but okay clean. I'm happy with that. Fortunately, it looks like they had glued the bridge on top of the finish uh, about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch all the way around. So that's a good thing since I'm not going to be able to make this uh, blank much bigger than the piece of wood that they sent me. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and trace this all out. I kind of temporarily glued this thing back together so that I could uh, at least trace it. But right now what we're going to do is this, this uh, blank is rough sawed in both, on both sides. So I'm going to take it over to the uh, belt sander and just sand it smooth on one I'm bending one side. down here because I don't want to readjust the camera. <laughs> you may have noticed that uh, in my previous videos I've uh, been doing a lot of coughing. Well, we had all that checked out and sure enough I do have some spots in my lungs. And uh, we've checked it for, you know, kind of a preliminary check with a CAT scan as a cancerous thing with a dye with that dye uh, injection and that whole bit 
And so far, uh, it doesn't look like it's cancerous, thank God. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, that makes me much more aware. So I am definitely going to be wearing my respirator on just about anything I do in the shop from now on. I should have been wearing it more often over the last 30 years. So if you're new getting into woodworking, wear one of these things. You'll thank me later. Okay, this... Uh, block of wood has a little tiny flaw in it, which I don't really like. You can probably see it right there. It doesn't really <laughs> affect it much, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand it flat on the opposite side that doesn't have the flaw. So I'm going to, that'll be my good side for sure. And then that'll give me a flat surface and then I can cut off most of the uh, flaw area uh, with the bandsaw. Okay, I'm going to click the uh, dust collector to turn on. You can probably hear it turn on or maybe not, <laughs> and here we go. That pretty much smoothed it out, got it nice and flat, and uh, real pretty on the bottom there. Now we'll run that smooth edge along the fence and run it through the, the uh, bandsaw to uh, cut off some of the excess A couple things here. about this setup. First of all, the fence is too high, but it's the fence that I have and it's handy. I could set up a better fence with, I mean a, a shorter fence with a board or something. Just takes time for the setup. If I had a used blade on here, uh, this blade just happens to be almost brand new. And I'm going to really watch it for wondering, but as long as the blade is cutting true, this fence will be fine. I would recommend normally to have a much shorter fence just to, to basically be the height of the wood you're cutting so that you can put your blade guides down as close to the cut as possible. In this case, I feel pretty confident just because it's a good bandsaw, it's got a brand new blade on it, and I'm going to cut very slow. Uh, yeah, it turned out real good. You can tell just a hair where where that cut stopped and started right there, but no big deal. And uh, we did cut out most of the flaw, although some of the flaw is still showing up here. I think by the time we do the thickness sanding, most of that flaw is going to be gone. I still left it quite a bit thick, so we still got quite a bit of work to do I on this yet. Took my calipers, measured the thickness in the thickest place that I could find on the old bridge. And it came out just shy of 250 thousandths, so I'm going to make it 250 thousandths on this one. Actually, it came out to like 235, so I'm just going to add that 15 thousandths on there, which is about five human hair or something like that. And uh, anyway, I'm just going to add that onto this and, and cut this to 250 thousandths. And that should give me enough room to uh, start uh, profiling well, I should the bridge have then. Probably taken more off of here with the uh, bandsaw. However, uh, I didn't, and therefore I've got about a hundred thousandths to go before I get down to where I want to be. So I'm going to go over to my commercial sander, which has much heavier sandpaper on it, and uh, take a pass on that, and that'll knock down quite a bit real fast. And then I'll bring it back here for the fine tuning. I wasn't going to film using the commercial sander, however, since I'm doing it in such a different way, I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I'm doing it. I don't have the driving belt on here at the moment. The driving belt broke, to be perfectly honest with you, and you know, I think that was a blessing in disguise because I really like it better without the belt. Uh, the belt never, you know, it's got varying thicknesses or whatever, and you never got an exact sanding, uh, you know, you could just never check it and be accurate. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it just wasn't very accurate with the belt on there. With the belt off, I can slide pieces through just like I do with my homemade sander and it works awesome. I mean, it just works awesome and I can, I can control the cut better. Right now I've got about 55 thousandths more to go. So I've got it set to uh, take a cut already and I just thought I'd show you how I do it. Now, I'm not recommending you do this. Sure, it could be dangerous. Sure, I understand all that. 
but I'm willing to take the risk. It's a, it's a really good way to work with it. I've been using it this way for several months. I haven't had a single problem. It may be because I'm used to using my other thickness sander that it works so well this way. Okay, that worked real good. Um, I'd say we've got 30 thousandths to go. I'm gonna take this back over to the fine sander now because those grooves in here might even be 30 thousandths deep because this sandpaper is much, much rougher. This is the real coarse sandpaper. I don't recall the grit, but it's very coarse. I'm gonna say it's about a 30 to 60 grit, somewhere in there. To show you what pretty, you know, real accuracy is, we were going for 250 thousandths. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully it's focused. Anyway, it's right on 250 thousandths, exactly. Um, so we're good there. The flaw went mostly away. You can still see it a little bit in the wood right here, but we can turn that on the downside. Um, you can even see a little bit of a dark area through here. Uh, that grew through the wood, but it's it doesn't really show up. So it's not going to be a problem And we'll probably dye this black anyway because it's not absolutely a hundred percent black and uh, We'll just probably add some dye to it and it'll look just like the original when we're done Ordinarily, I would do this at my desk But I already had the camera set up here by the drill by the bandsaw. So it's just as easy to do it here I'm just all I'm gonna do is just trace the profile on the blank and uh, I say that now I'm gonna think about that just a second here um, you know this woods expensive it really is and I could draw it right in the center of this or I could slide it to this end which looks like it's gonna work just fine and draw it here and save all this wood now that's just a very small piece of wood, but when you're dealing in instruments, small pieces of wood, especially exotic wood, come in handy all the time. So that's all I'm doing. I don't think that'll probably show up. Maybe if I get it in the right light there, you can see the tracing. But uh, anyway, we're gonna cut that out. I'm gonna leave the pencil mark as best I can. wasn't the best on this and uh, I don't know I it, underneath here I couldn't see the pencil mark very good but I was able to stay pretty much on the outside of it I made a kind of a jagged cut but but that's okay we're going to take care of all that on the uh, spindle sander and we'll sand up to the marks there and, and smooth it all out <laughs> move my sanding table a little closer to my drill press and I'm using the drill press light to give me a little bit more light I went over to the desk and retraced it again and I can see a little more pencil mark that needs to be removed across the top here so that's what I'm gonna do that's about as close as I can get it with this sander now I'm going to take some detail files and just touch it up a little bit and just make sure it's as perfect as I can get it. This is in really bad shape, but it's the best thing I've got to try to line up these holes. So what I'm gonna do is just trace them on here and uh, you know, then I'll check them and, and see how symmetrical they are and stuff with a 
you know, I'll measure them and, and if there's some adjustment I have to make, well then I'll make it. But right now, with that being lined up, that's as close as I can get. And that doesn't look too bad, so that's, you know, I'm trying to, I want to be able to put them back in the same place they were. And as far as drilling this uh, bridge slot goes, I think I'm going to do that with a different method. I'll, uh, I'll put the bridge on there first and then we'll cut that slot with a Dremel after we get the bridge installed on the guitar and we can float the uh, saddle on there so that we know we get it in the exact right spot for intonation. Hey, I spent about 15 more minutes or a little more just doing some detailed profiling. Even went back to the spindle sander a little bit to touch up a spot or two. Pretty happy with it now. You know, I could never be completely satisfied. I'd work on it for a couple of hours yet if I wanted to. But it's pretty good. And it matches the profile really, really well. So, and now that I've got the holes more or less marked there, I think it's time to cut this thing into smithereens. Sh and I'm gonna cut very close to the pearl, staying away from the pearl. Uh, so that I can heat this pearl up and maybe get something in between it and pry it off of there and uh, we'll just see how that goes. I've been giving it a lot of thought on how I'm going to relocate these in the new bridge and get them in the exact same spot. Well, I don't know that I've got a perfect plan, but what I'm going to try to do is saw out just this edge and maybe a little bit of this corner here. Maybe even, maybe even down to the bottom, where, where I could use this much at least to locate it in the new, in, in other words, save the middle part of the bridge, just cut away the outside edges, and then that way I could lay this over the top and trace this line, and that would be my template to put this back in the right place. Now that the noise is kind of stopped, I'm going to uh, call that good for now and, and see if this will work. I'm going to take the uh, spindle sander and sand up real close to that edge, as close as I can get to it and uh, without really hitting the pearl. And uh, then I'm going to heat this up the best I can and see if we can't get a X-Acto knife or something to start underneath there and start lifting these up and see if we can get them out of there. Well, I didn't actually hit the pearl yet. I got it microscopically thin on the wood there. And that's where I want to stay right now. Um, and we're going to heat this up and see if we can't pop an X-Acto knife in, in between the joint and see if this will come out of there. So we'll go back to the desk got for this. Got the iron heated up pretty hot. I'm just making it come in contact with the pearl and the ebony and uh, just doing that by hand. The pearl will heat up and get really hot. I know that, I've, I've had that experience already. Fortunate, and so far it's never broken or anything, but you never know, every, everything, every situation is different when it comes to an instrument. You just never know what you're gonna run into. Try that again now. Yeah, we did it twice. Got both pieces out. No breaks, no cracks. Thought I'd just take a measurement on this one. This one seems to be the thicker of the two. This one's a little bit thicker than I thought it was. It's just a hair. It looks like it's about 41 thousandths, according to the calipers. This one here still got too much stuff on it to measure it. It's 35 thousandths, so it's about six thousandths thinner than the other one. I traced this outline on the, on the bridge, on the, on the new bridge, and then I laid those in the same spot, so that does look like that's gonna work pretty good for getting them back in the exact same place they were in the original. 